Welcome to Second Recount. At the beginning of the movie, Lieutenant Hank Marlowe's plane crashes in the South Pacific in 1944, and he drops down and lands on an island using his parachute. Gunpei Akari, an additional soldier, arrives. In an attempt to shoot Akari, Marlowe draws his gun. Marlowe is pursued by Akari as he pulls his revolver. When they approach a precipice, they flee into the forest and start fighting. Marlowe yanks the sword away from Akari as he almost stabs him. Prior to a massive ape hand appearing, Akari had Marlowe on the ground and was on the verge of killing him. As the monkey rose over them, the two guys saw it. In 1973, in Washington, D.C., government official Bill Randa and geologist Houston Brooks arrived to meet with Senator Willis to receive funding for an expedition to a recently discovered location called Skull Island. Willis isn't too keen on the idea, but Randa goads him into relenting. Before leaving, Randa tells Willis he also would like a military escort. The Sky Devil Squadron are gathered on their last day before they can finally go home. Led by Colonel Preston Packard, they include Captain Earl Cole, Slifko, Rells, Glenn Mills, and Jack Chapman, who was Packard's right-hand man. Packard receives the call for the expedition and gladly accepts the job. Rand and Brooks go to a bar and find a former British Special Air Service captain named James Conrad to be their tracker. Conrad is confronted by two bar patrons who believe he cheated in a game of pool, but he easily subdues the men. Randa is immediately impressed, telling Brooks they found their guide. Conrad sits with Randa and Brooks to hear their plan. When he hears their offer, he demands extra money and warns them that there's a good chance the trip will result in their death due to factors like dangerous weather or carnivorous animals. Photographer Mason Weaver, an anti-war activist, is developing some of the images she made during the Vietnam War inside a darkroom. She receives a call inviting her to join the expedition, and she travels to the base to meet Packard and his troops, as well as a group of scientists from the business Landsat, including Sam Lin, a fellow geologist and colleague of Brooks, and Victor Neves and Steve, who work for Landsat. Weaver has doubts about the mission and believes that the military is preparing a terrible plan. The objective and what they expect to uncover on Skull Island are described by Brooks. The team sails into the ocean before taking choppers to the island. They must pass through clouds that produce hurricane-like conditions, but are able to find a high-pressure pocket that they believe will be a safer route. After a turbulent ride through the storm, the choppers fly across the area. Weaver takes some pictures while the soldiers begin dropping seismic charges into the ground, setting off explosions. Almost immediately, a tree is thrown through one of the choppers, sending it crashing to the ground. The team then sees Kong towering over them. He sends another tree through a chopper before grabbing a few more and smashing them into the ground. The surviving team members are separated once they hit the ground. Amidst the flames burning from the remains of the choppers, Packard stares up at Kong, who looks down back at him. Packard confronts Randa at gunpoint and demands to know what really brought them there. Randa admits that he had known about the existence of monsters like Kong for a while, and he is seeking proof for his organization Monarch. Conrad, Weaver, Brooks, Lynn, Slifko, and Neves are grouped together, while Randa, Packard, Mills, Cole, and other soldiers set out to look for Chapman, as he is equipped with enough ammunition that Packard intends to use against Kong. As the soldiers walk through a bamboo forest, one soldier suddenly stops. A bamboo tree has impaled him through the mouth. Above them is a giant spider that starts attacking them. Mills is pulled up by the webbing, and the rest of the soldiers start cutting its legs off. Mills cuts himself loose, and Packard shoots the spider to death. Chapman is by himself near a river. He sees Kong walking through the river to tend to a wound he sustained from the chopper's gunfire. Kong drinks from the river and then finds a giant octopus. He tangles with it, fighting off its tentacles before he starts to eat it. He then drags the octopus carcass away. Conrad's group is cornered by a tribe of natives. As they try to defend themselves, out comes an older Marlow. He reassures both sides that they won't hurt one another before inviting them through the barricade. Marlow informs the party that he has lived there for the past 28 years and has gained extensive knowledge about the locals and the island. They revere Kong as a deity because he has protected them from both Kong's own family and the beasts that live beneath the soil and have been wiping off the indigenous for generations. They are known as Skull Crawlers by Marlow. They remained underneath until they were awakened by the seismic charge blasts. Kong will be in danger, and the Skull Crawlers will rule the island. He also suggests that the Skull Crawlers that have come to the surface are just juveniles, and that a much larger one exists. Still alone, Chapman walks through the forest and sits on a log. 
the log turns out to be a giant insect. Chapman shoots at it, but the creature does not retaliate. As the creature leaves, Chapman is killed by a skull crawler. Along the way, Weaver sees a huge water buffalo stuck under a crash chopper. She tries lifting it up to free the buffalo, only for Kong to show up and pull the chopper off. He stares down at Weaver briefly and leaves. She appears more awed by him than terrified. Conrad tells Marla that they plan to make it to their rendezvous point on the north side of the island within three days so that they may be rescued. Marlo says that it cannot be done in three days on foot, so he agrees to guide them the right way. He bids the natives farewell and takes the crew on a boat. Shortly after riding away, Neves is snatched up by carnivorous birds and is torn apart midair. Marla leads the group into the Forbidden Zone, which is a former battleground between Kong's ancestors and the Skull Crawlers. The enormous remains of Kong's family lie among the field. A Skull Crawler appears, forcing the group to hide. The skull crawler then spits out Chapman's skull and dog tags, which Conrad notices. Randa is taking pictures and is then snatched up and eaten by a skull crawler. Another beast shows up and starts to attack and pull victims in with its tongue. The groups continue their battle with the skull crawlers plus a wave of the carnivorous birds. Marlo takes out the sword that belonged to Ikari and slashes through several of the birds before handing it over to Conrad. Weaver kills one by tossing a lighter into a hole that produces fumes, which is ignited, and sets the creature on fire. After the fight, they regroup. Packard is still set on looking for Chapman. Conrad shows Packard Chapman's dog tags to confirm his demise. Still, Packard wants to look for Chapman's ammunition stash so that they can kill Kong. He is hellbent on revenge for the deaths of his men, despite the objections of Marlow, Conrad, and Weaver. Packard gets explosives that evening and sets Kong up for a trap. Weaver approaches the beast warily while Conrad and Weaver come across him in the meantime. He is kind as she gently touches his face. The fuel near the water, however, is ignited by Packard after luring Kong towards him, singeing and scorching Kong's fur. Before collapsing, Kong stomps on Steve and murders another man in the commotion. Then, as Packard prepares to detonate some explosives, Conrad and Weaver work to stop him. The other soldiers are persuaded that Kong is necessary in order to keep the skull crawlers out. Packard continues to be obstinate as the soldiers turn on him. Just then, the biggest skull crawler bursts out of the ground, forcing the group to run. Packard stays behind to detonate the explosives, but Kong crushes him under his fist. The survivors then head toward the shore as the main skull crawler pursues them. Cole stays behind to sacrifice himself with the explosive devices he has strapped to himself. However, the monster tail whips Cole into a wall and he blows up anyway. The skull crawler heads toward the group until Kong returns and smashes into the beast. Weaver takes a flare gun and hits the skull crawler in the face with it. Kong grabs the skull crawler and hurls him into the wall, accidentally knocking Weaver into the river. Kong uses a ship's propeller attached to a length of anchor chain to wound the beast, finally slashing it on the throat. The beast isn't dead and attacks again. Kong pulls Weaver out and still fights the skull crawler. He rams his fist down the monster's throat and pulls out its guts. Kong then places Weaver down next to Conrad before leaving. Shortly after, the survivors depart on the boat and three choppers show up to get them. In the distance, Kong keeps a lookout to continue protecting his territory. He pounds his fist and lets out a roar. As the credits begin, we see video footage of Marlowe finally returning home to Chicago where he sees his wife again and finally meets his adult son. He then sits down to watch a Cubs game with a hot dog and a beer. After the credits, Conrad and Weaver are being held in an interrogation room by Monarch. Entering the room are Brooks and Lynn, who tell the two that Kong was never the only monster out there and that this world did not always belong to humankind. Brooks pulls out some files, including a map of Tokyo, before putting them on a slideshow. The slides show another crew coming across cave drawings of other monsters. Mothra, King Ghidorah, Rodan, and Godzilla himself. The last thing we hear are the combined roars of Kong and Godzilla. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.